and this is this doesn't really fit into this main method, but I'm going to throw it here at the end of the main method just so it's all in your notes in one place. Um, and this is a method that we definitely need to be familiar with uh, that until now we, we couldn't really see how best to use it. Um, and this is the math.random method. Okay, So last unit we used the random class to generate random integers. Um, and that was that was great because we were practicing creating new objects and we we're calling methods on those objects. The random class is not part of the AP subset, so it will not be on the quick reference sheet that I'm about to give you. Um, but the math.random method, uh, which is a static method on the math class, that's why we can say math.random, um, it is part of the AP Java subset. It is on the quick reference sheet I'm about to give you, and so it's really good to be familiar with how we can use this to generate not only just any random number, but specifically a range of random integers, which is how we most often use this. Um, I can't think of an AP exam where this wasn't on, wasn't part of the, the exam. So the math.random static method, um, it doesn't take any parameters, um, and it returns a double between zero inclusive and one exclusive. Okay, so I'm using the mathematical symbols of a square bracket for inclusive and an open bracket for exclusive. It could return zero. It will never return one. Okay, it might return 0 0.99999, but it will not return one. Sometimes generating a random number in this range is exactly what we want, and we'll certainly use it that way throughout this course. But often we use this um, to generate random a range of random integers. So often we use the following algorithm, and this should look familiar from the last exam, um, to generate random integers from min to max, in including min and including max. So here's what the code would look like int n equals, and we'll break this down piece by piece, but the algorithm should look familiar. And then we'll do an example here too. For example, generate a random int from 1 to 6. And we'll write code for that too. So this is like our die roll example from before. And that's what the syntax looks for that. So there's a lot more going on this going on in this statement. Um, than what we had to worry about when we were using the random class. So I kind of want to break this down because it actually connects to several things that we've seen throughout the course of chapter four. Um, working from the inside out, random is a static method of the math class, so we don't need a new math object. We can just say math.random. It returns a value between zero inclusive and one exclusive. So it might return zero. It might return 0 0.99999. We then multiply it by 6. So the smallest value would be 0 times 6, which is 0. The largest value would be 0 0.99999999 times 6, which would be 5.99999. Okay. After that, the next part of the operation, we've completed this part of the expression. We now add 1 to that value. So the smallest value would be 0 plus 1. It would be 1. And the largest value would be the 5.99999 plus 1, which would be 6.99999. So we've evaluated this entire expression. The next step is to cast it to an integer. So here's that cast operator, another new concept from chapter 4. When we cast a double to an int, we truncate it. We get rid of the decimal portion. So zero would just become, I'm sorry, one would just become one, but five, I'm sorry, 6.9999999 would just become 
6. It does not get rounded. So then we'll assign that resulting integer to die roll. So it could be assigned a value of 1. It could be assigned a value of 6 um, or anything else in between the two. Um, so again, this is one of those algorithms and code snippets that we will certainly practice, um, but you definitely need to know. Falls in that category.